The truth is that if you do not have a plan, it means you don't have a direction. And if you do not know where you are going, you are not going anywhere. You must have a plan about your life. What are you doing with your hands? What are you doing with your imagination? What are you doing with your time, with your life? What is the guarantee that my tomorrow must be greater or better than today? What is the guarantee that my life right now will advance and be better, that I will not live five years ahead and then look back and my life is still the same? Nothing has really changed. So if my tomorrow must be greater than today, I need to know these four things and put them into practice. Number one, I must prioritize my today. The truth is that my tomorrow is a culmination of the choices I make today. Every choice I make today is a building block that make up my tomorrow. My tomorrow is not made up by wishful thinking as if somebody came to me and says, will you see yourself in the next five years? And I'm like, um, yeah, the sky is my limit. And they said, okay, so what is the plan? And I'm like, I'm just trusting God that things are going to change, that, you know, life is going to become better. And it's like, like, do you really have a plan? Do you really have things that you're doing that you know, maybe in the next two to three to four years that your life is going to change? And this is where God spoke to me in my heart. And I realized that I don't want to live a life that when I look back, I'm looking back with regret, but I want to live a life that when I look back, I'm looking back with gratitude. I'm looking back as if the older version of me, my older self is telling my younger self, thank you so much. Thank you for the sacrifices you made. Thank you for not choosing comfort today. Thank you for trying to make choices that is making it easier for us to have a better future. So if I don't prioritize my today, if I stay today to worry about my future, there's no guarantee that I will have a better tomorrow. So I really need to come to a place of being intentional, knowing that every choice I make has a consequence. And I have the right to my choice. But then every choice I make, I cannot choose the consequences. So if I choose to enjoy today at the expense of my tomorrow, I can't choose the consequence of what will happen to me tomorrow. Of course, it looks like I've already chosen it with the choice that I make for what I'm doing today. Whether it's in my area of getting married, the kind of person I marry, the choice of marriage I want to have, it's dependent on the choices I make today. If my finances are going to get better, it's dependent on the choices I'm making today, whether with my savings or with the financial knowledge that I get to acquire and asking God for wisdom to be able to put this knowledge into practice. And this is where I am in my life that God is saying, if my tomorrow must be greater than today, it is not about me saying I'm living by faith. Scripture says that faith without works itself is dead. But it's like your faith won't take you anywhere. Because faith is about now. I'm having faith that things will change. I'm having faith that I will get a job and I get to apply. I'm having faith that my company will grow and I put in work. I keep improving and keep doing what I'm supposed to do. I'm not hoping on God to come do those things for me. I have to do my part. My part is to bring the input. God's part is to bring the results, which is the output. And I can't control the output, but I can control my input into life. I can't control the output I get. I can control me creating content. I can't control who's going to watch and who's not going to watch or if they are going to watch at all. But I need to do my due diligence to make research and do what I'm supposed to do to make sure it's valuable. So that whoever is looking at it will be like, thank you. I'm blessed watching this. So whatever I'm doing with my life, I have to prioritize my today. Instead of sitting today to worry, oh, I don't even know where I'm going in life. I don't even know what my life will become. I don't even know what is going to happen with my life and all of that. Scripture says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 34, Give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. It is as if God is telling you one day at a time. Prioritize today. You cannot live today worrying about the future. A hero is made in the moment, not by worrying about the future, but by taking ownership of the present. If you're not present today, then where are you going to be present? 
tomorrow because tomorrow will be another today. So choose today and be present today and prioritize today. What are you going to do today? As you wake up in the morning each day, what are you going to look to do? What are you going to do? I know I'm taking a lot of time on this very point, but to get to the next point, you need to know that your today is what will determine your future, your tomorrow. Because life is lived on a daily basis. Life is not lived weekly or monthly. It's lived daily, which is each choice you make each day is a big part of what makes up your future is a big part of what makes up your tomorrow. It may not look like it, but it's like the little drop of water that keeps dropping until it fills the bucket. And that is why each good choice you make, each fake choice you make is a little drop that will fill the bucket. And when you look at yourself in the next five years, you'll be like, thank God. And then you thank your younger self. Thank you. And then you live a life of gratitude instead of regrets. Number two, if my tomorrow must be greater than today, I must have a plan. The truth is that if you do not have a plan, it means you don't have a direction. And if you do not know where you are going, you are not going anywhere. You must have a plan about your life. What are you doing with your hands? What are you doing with your imagination? What are you doing with your time, with your life? If you are saying, I'm a Christian, I'm believing God, and then you just sit, some way and pray and pray and pray and you're asking God for finances. Do not forget that finances is about principles. Your prayer is good, but you as a Christian praying should be an advantage that when you pray, God helps you to apply these principles. God helps you with the right strategy to apply the principles to bring you to success. But if you are just dependent on just sitting somewhere to pray, you will keep on praying for years. And when you look back at yourself, you accept the notion that people that pray are as poor as the church rights. You accept that notion. You accept the notion that people that serve God do not get wealthy. That God doesn't want people to get wealthy. You start accepting wrong notions. And that is the thing I tell myself. I must have a plan. Because scripture tells me in Habakkuk 2, write the vision down, make it plain. I must have a plan. And that doesn't negate that I have to depend on God and God's plan. You know, we've always had this idea, which I spoke with someone some years back, and the person was like, no, me, I don't really plan my life like that because man proposes, God disposes. And what this person is, was trying to tell me is that if they make plans, they don't know if God is going to trash those plans, like God is going to dispose of those plans. And I'm like, no, but that's not what the scripture says. That is not scriptural. Man proposes, God disposes, is not in the area of you making plans because scripture actually tells you it is your duty to make a plan. It is your duty to plan your life, but then commit those plans to God. It is your duty to plan your life. That is your responsibility, but you cannot plan the outcome. You can plan your input to life. You can plan the things you get to do, but you will not determine the outcome. God determines the proper answer to every plan you have and that is why scripture admonishes us that we should bring our plan to God as if we are telling God please vex this plan for me is it in line with your will this is what I want to do this is who I want to marry vex this person for me is this in line with your will for me and when you do that you should do that with open hands you're not going to God and be like oh God vex this plan for me and you are grabbing it with your full hands you don't trust God when you do that you have to keep open arms. If God decides to say, okay, no, I will replace it with a bigger plan, then it's to your advantage. I have something bigger than this. Because God always wants to exceed our expectations. Scripture says in Proverbs 16, To humans belong the plans of the heart, but from the Lord comes the proper answer of the tongue. Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. Like I said, just take all the plans you have in your heart all the things that God has laid in your heart to do and then present them to God and then keep doing it. If you are just sitting somewhere, no plans, nothing in your hands, you only come to a place of becoming lazy. But if you have plans, you can now commit them to God and then you, you keep doing things, you, you keep walking and you are listening to God, you are telling God, this is what I want, this is what I'm doing, but let your will be done, not mine. Because and I trust you that you have my best interest at heart. If my tomorrow must be greater than today, I must have a plan. Number three, if my tomorrow must be greater than today, I must prioritize my time. 
Time is one of the most important assets to our lives as human beings because all our lives is propagated with time. We are the ones that are in time. God is outside of time. So when we talk about timing and we say God's time is the best, God's time is the best as much as you also have a responsibility for God's time to come to you. Because if God had wanted to give you something at a certain age and you were not prepared for it, God cannot still give it to you. Even when you say his time is the best, he can't give it to you because you are unprepared. But if you prepare for what God has for you, time is not a constraint to God. It's a constraint to us. God is actually in control of time. Because God can restore time even if you feel like you've missed out on things you wanted to do. God can restore time and then compress everything and give you in one year. But he needs to know, do you have the capacity? Because God doesn't want to give you something that when he gives it to you, the thing will break you and then destroy you. Everything God gives you, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father of life. It has to be good and perfect. Perfect in the sense that it's not going to destroy you. It's not going to harm you. It's not going to hurt you. The blessings of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. So God is not going to bless you and then the blessing will become a cause. No, God won't give it to you. That is why you have to prioritize your time. The psalmist says in Psalm 90, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. You have to know you don't have enough time. The things you do with your time, the people you choose to give your time, you should give your time on things that will pay you, that thing on things that will pay off. On things of impact. If you are impacting in people, you can do that. If you are of help to people, you can do that. But don't let people use you by using your time. Your time is valuable. You have to prioritize your time, how you use it. And that doesn't negate the aspect that your time involves you having to rest. It's part of your time because it is your health. If you fall sick, through so much stress, it's going to steal a lot of your time. So you need to Live your life prioritizing your time. And then I pray God gives you wisdom and gives me wisdom to be able to prioritize my time and know the right things to do with my time. The fourth and the last thing I would say here, as much as there are so many other things that we can talk about on if my tomorrow must be greater than today, these are the things that you and I should do. But from the points I made up, the fourth and the last point I have for this video is I need to move in courage and not fear. If my tomorrow must be greater than today, there are some things that God has placed in my heart to do. And because of fear, I'm holding myself back because I'm afraid of what people will say. I'm afraid of what people will think of me. I'm afraid of how it's going to look to other people. I'm afraid that it's going to look foolish, that people are, like people are going to think that I'm walking in pride. But I have to move in courage. I could see God telling Joshua, be strong and courageous. About three times in Joshua chapter one. And I asked myself, why? Why do God repeat himself, keep saying to Joshua, be strong and be courageous? He's telling him, you are going to face things in your walk, in your journey to the promised land that will not be, you know, familiar to you. Things that are going to kind of like put you off, you know, off balance. So in life, you're going to face so many things that will put you off balance and you need to be strong and courageous. The Bible says in God we live, we move, and we have our being. If we have God as a ready help in times of trouble, we need to depend on him, knowing that in and of myself I am not strong, but with God I am strong. That is why scriptures and Proverbs clearly say that if you fail in the day of adversity, your strength is small. It means the, the measurement of a small strength is a strength that is based on you, your effort and your ability as a human. But once you depend on God, adversity can't put you off. Adversity cannot throw you down. Instead, you will even glide on the wings of those adversity to your success. And I pray that this video will be beneficial to you and that your tomorrow actually will be greater than today. That the choices you're making today will make for a better tomorrow for you and a greater tomorrow for you. That the choices of faith that you choose to make and the sacrifices and the investments you make into your future will pay you off. Thank you so much for watching. I am Uwe and This is my YouTube channel. It is such a pleasure to have you watch. See you in my next YouTube video.
拜。